here. So um, what we're going to be covering today is called um, opening range breakout theory. So I'm just going to do a little back history on exactly what opening range um, breakout is and then we'll kind of just go into there and then we're going to move over to the TOS charts you see um, in the video here. I'm going to talk about what I look at in a day in a day of day trading and then we're just going to kind of go through the week of last week of how the ORB would have worked and kind of go from there. So for those who don't know, ORB, and I just 99% of the time call it ORB because it's shorter than typing opening range breakout. Um, basically how it came about is overnight orders accumulate. So those orders being placed generally during the first 15 minutes of regular and traded hours combined with the fact that generally the first 30 minutes has a higher amount of trading volume um, establishes a general range. So essentially there's three ways to trade this. Um, and these are just, is just coming straight from like um, somebody that did a write up on ORB and then I'm gonna tell you how I trade it. So this isn't necessarily how I trade the ORB, but this is some different ways. So the first way you can trade it is called the early morning range breakout. So essentially what this would be is you're looking for this bright green dashed line or this dark red dashed line. So this is the opening low, which I usually just refer to as support or the opening high, which I usually refer to as resistance. Essentially the way this, this, um, this, this one works is you would look for, so like here, you have your opening range on the 15 minute chart we're on this candle right here, you look, we bounced off support. Okay, we closed over the resistance. So you would then play essentially a call. And then the way that theory works or that strategy of the ORB would work is you basically sit into a call. And what these other white lines here are, are actually ATR levels, which are um, average true range levels. Um, there's a calculation that essentially the computers do for you. And what these actually are referred to as are um, take profits. So you have your first take profit and then your second take profit. So if you played on this is Monday, February 27th, if you played this first strategy of the opening range, early morning range breakout, and you took a call once we closed over the green resistance line at 400, it was at 400.03, you would then play a call until we hit the next line, which is 400.9. You would use a stop loss and that's the first, first way people change it. Um, the next one is called the chart pattern gap pullback, pullback buy. Um, this basically is another approach for trading the opening range, but is applied only to bullish gaps. So that would essentially be uh, on the daily chart. If we have a gap up, you would basically look for the breakdown to fill that gap and equivalent with these levels. And then you would play that and you would buy. Um, for those who don't know, generally speaking, when there's a gap on the daily chart, nine times out of 10, um, that gap will fill intraday. Um, not always. I mean, if we have like a, you know, five, six, seven dollar gap up like we have had this last couple of weeks with these crazy, you know, 1% opens, then it doesn't always apply. But if you have a small, you know, one to two dollar gap, generally I will say that they will fill at open. So that's kind of how you use that strategy. Um, and then the other way is called the gap reversal, which is what most people, um, is kind of the same thing but a little different. So then we're going to talk about how I use um, the ATR and how I use the opening range breakouts theory here. So basically we're just going to go through a normal trading day here. Um, and like with any other indicator, you should never trade the indicator without some sort of supporting evidence. So my supporting evidence when I use this indicator is always bold. Um, I do have some other indicators that I'm not able to share on my screen that I do also use to assist, but for the most part, I, you can use pretty much strictly bold and the EMAs and to assist you. So let's take a look. This is, we're going to just start on Monday. You can follow along if you would like to, um, if you have your own chart pulled up. 
Um, but so this is Monday, and then there's two ways to trade this. You can trade off a five minute chart, which is predominantly how I will trade um, the ORB, and I usually predominantly use the five minute for entries. Um, but you can also do it on the 15 minute chart, and you can see on Monday how beautiful this was. So let's take a look here at Monday. So basically we come in, market opened. First thing we do is touch the resistance here. Now, keep in mind that when you're trading live, you will not obviously have the full range um, established until this first five minute candle is closed. And then that next five minute candle, so about 9.35, you should start getting your range to pop up. Um, depending on think or swim, sometimes I have seen that I've had to wait till about 9.40, but on the five minute and 15 minute chart, you really shouldn't be waiting past 9.45 for this range to pop up. So this is what I look for. So we open the day here. You can see we're already riding this blue line here is the 20 EMA. So we're already riding our 20 EMA and our 20 EMA is already over our 50 EMA. So what do we have to do? We have to think bullish. We start the day in a bullish move. So we expect that to continue. Um, we should never expect that we are automatically going to reverse. It is counterproductive to ever assume that when the market opens, we are going to reverse. That is not the way you should be playing or uh, trading. If you are, I highly recommend that you stop. Um, from there, we opened up, we came down, we have our first big five minute candle, and this kind of goes along with being in this range here. So we come down, next candle opens and establishes support on the ORB red dash line, which is the opening range. So you can see how this first candle here established that opening range for us. So we're still holding it. So 935 comes, we establish it as support. 940 comes, we reestablish it as support. And you can see we are not able to break out here. And the next candle comes, this right here, this is your ideal entry. Why? Because it's a reversal candle up, this doji right here, and we are obviously holding support. So on this candle right here, we did attempt to break down, but then we broke up. This candle did not even attempt to break. This one would have attempted to break down and then pushed up. So at 945, and we can even go over to Vold and find Vold at 945. So you can see here, we are still pushing green. Now keep in mind, Vold, which is um, the up and down volume of the New York Stock Exchange, isn't as accurate, so probably I would say closer to 10, but we can still keep an eye on it. If we open and we're straight pushing green like this, then that's a pretty good indicator. Um, but sometimes you will need to wait for VOLD confirmation until later in the day. But then after probably I would say closer to 10, it's pretty accurate. So here we have our breakdown. We bounced, we have held support on this, this 399.26 uh, for four candles in a row. This would be your entry. So we get some green money flow here, which is this green arrow for me. Um, and then we're gonna take a call. So where are we taking our call to? You take the call from support to the next resistance. So for me, when I'm trading, and I talk about it all the time, I trade level to level. And this is predominantly um, in addition to supply and demand, and also in addition to volatility levels, um, and the EMAs, and VOLD, and a couple other things in my daily, daily levels I have and what, whatnot that I trade level to level. So I'm basically trading from one major support to the next resistance. And then I look to take profit. And then I will look to do it again and again and again. So here we would have taken a call at 399.26. Now, generally speaking with this strategy, at least for me, I always wait for candle confirmation. So here is a big reason. Obviously we're not looking live, so it's a little harder to see it. But on this candle right here, obviously it pushed below support. So you would have thought, oh wow, you know what? We're pushing below support of this ORB. We should play a put down to 380 or 398.5. However, if you did that, you would have gotten absolutely burned. We always wait for confirmation. You may miss the move. Like here, if you waited for confirmation, you missed the move. However, you will not get burned by waiting. Remember, we don't need to trade every single setup. We just need to trade the high probability setups. So 
From here, we bounce on support, we take our call, we play it up here, we hit our target of 400. This is where I personally would take profits. Now, I obviously probably, if you know me, would have taken profits on this candle when I got my 5%. However, if you're somebody that likes to just hold it and you're okay, then you could play it up here and you play it to 400. Now this is where you could either take profits or if you feel the opening range is going to break out, you could hold it and you can play it to the next ATR level. This, uh, this levels on, on this one is basically established um, right by um, the, the, the indicator itself. I don't establish these solid white lines right here. So then we have the same thing. So 955 happens. We broke through opening range breakout. That is bullish. Now something to keep in mind here and that will burn you if you're not careful and this goes along with confirmation is you 99% of the time and you can even see it on the 15 minute chart right here will back test the ORB once you break through. So what I mean by that is so this had this huge move up here. We closed um at 400.31 so you're thinking oh great we closed over that's my confirmation we are for sure pushing to 400.8 let's take another call if you take that call and you're not patient you probably got stopped out why because it almost always comes back down and bounces off of support or loses it as you can see sometimes it will lose it too so you have to wait for confirmation you have to be careful so on this candle right here, if we are holding, we're bouncing, we're still riding the EMA. So this is now 10 o'clock. Let's go look at bold here. Beautiful for calls. If you're looking for a call, you want to see this green. This is perfect. Okay, so you're like, all right, I got bold confirmation. I got some green money flow too. We're holding EMA, we're bullish. Cool, call opportunity, boom. We touch the line, we bounce off 400.6, you're in a call. Okay, so where are we playing the call to? We're playing it to the next resistance, which is 400.8. Yep, um, I'm gonna say Mylan, I think is your name. Yeah, so I 95% profitability over the last three weeks for him or her. Um, yeah, it's a very high probability strategy. Um, it just really takes patience, really, really takes patience because you can't be early. If you're early, you're wrong. So on the five minute chart here, this is where a good example of where it gets complicated. So we break through here. We close over the, the first ATR, which is at 400.8. This is now 10.05. Okay, let's look at volume here at 10, or VOLD at 10.05. Still pushing green. Now you're thinking, okay, cool, I'm gonna get my back test. So you buy a call at 10.10 when we back test 400.8 and hold it. You're thinking this is perfect. It's gonna go up here to 401.6, right? Not always. So this is where you gotta be careful because it can fail and it can back test. So just because we close over one ATR or even just because we close over the ORB resistance at opening does not mean it will 100% continue that direction. It absolutely can change. The main benefit of this strategy is that it gives you levels to watch and it gives you marks for confirmation. So let's look at an opportunity where we can play um, a rejection. So when I talk about confirmation, I'm talking about a close, not just a wick, a close of a candle. So here we go, we break up, we are holding consolidation. Now supports at 400.8 for the ATR, remember. So what happens? We close below 400.8, and this is now at 1025. So we're gonna check volume. If you're ever playing against trend, which at open here is obviously bullish, you must have, or you should have if you're smart, uh, confirmation with Volt. So now at 1021, we have some red candles yet, red candles. Okay, 1025, remember 1025 is when this happens. We're still pushing green, so you would not take a put yet. So then we're happening, what we're gonna do is we close below. Remember, we're gonna back test. Most of the time we're gonna back test. So we back test 400.8 resistance and we close below again. Now is our chance to look for a put again. 10.30, let's look at VOLD. Okay, 10.30, we got a big rejection. We're coming down. This would be enough for a put entry. And we can go down here. 
Let's see, 10.30 on the five minute charts, this one right here. You can see we're topping. So we have, these are HA candles, uh, Hakini Ashi candles, if you're not familiar. They just show a little bit of a different picture. I like to use it for bold and my one minute chart. Um, you can see we're pushing up, we're making new highs, making new highs, making new highs. We have this doji-like candle here that makes a new low at 10.30 with our rejection, high probability with red money flow for a put here. So where are we playing our put to? You're playing your put to the next level, 400.03. Now, obviously this one, and you can see that's why it could skip a level, it could just push through to another one. You gotta take pro you gotta decide where you wanna take profits. You gotta decide in this strategy, is this, is this something I wanna just hold and I'm gonna play it and just throw on like a trailing stop loss? Is this where I'm gonna hold and once I get profits, I'm gonna establish, say, my um, stop loss at my entry? You got to make your own choice in this one. For me, I have my target of about five to ten percent, and I'm also um, ch ch checking for the next level, and that's basically where I look to take profits. So here we come down, we break. Look at that, we bounce right off and close over ORB opening range support of three ninety nine point two six. Beautiful. So if you played this and we lost this, and you were playing, you would got right here. Look at that perfect support. So here we just kind of, this is a really crazy, I remember this morning here, I mean, this was some big old wicks and no direction. So then we come back up here. So this is where the, the strategy can fake you out and you gotta be careful. And this is where you gotta protect yourself with stop losses. So here, and I think I actually was in a call, I'm 95% sure I did get burned on a call in this position right here. So we broke over after being under it and rejecting it for one, two, three, four, five, five minute candles, so about 25 minutes. We close over it. Remember, 20 EMA is over 50 EMA. This is 11.05. Let's see what our volume is doing at 11.05. Look at that. We got some bullish bold in there too. So what do you think? I would take a call here. Why? High probability that we're pushing back to this ORB at 400. What happened instead though is we put a beautiful double top in here and we break down to the next ATR below us. If you didn't have a stop loss and your plan was just to hold this until it hit this level up here or whatever else, you just got burnt hard. This is where any strategy can be wrong. And this is where you gotta be careful and you wait for confirmation. And it's not about being right 100% of the time. You will never be right 100% of the time. And you might be for a week or two. I mean, I've had it where I've had a couple weeks straight where I'm 100% win rate. But eventually it will come to an end. You have to be careful. You got to use your stop losses and you got to play your levels and you got to play what it gives you. So here we come back down and this is where I talk about you're going to miss opportunities. You're going to miss the move. If you watch me in the paid um, server, you talk about me like, oh, I missed that entry or it didn't give me confirmation or it moved too fast. So here we have this nice double top. And here's another opportunity where you could have got Burton in a, another call. We're coming back down to test ORB support at 399.25. Instead of holding that support like you might expect after breaking through, much like we did up here, we broke through, held, and pushed. Uh, instead, we just break straight back down to the next support ATR at 398.5. And then from here, it's the same story. We bounce, you look for your confirmation right here, and we break down. Um, and this is where, too, you, you can't have two type of a stop loss. So we got our confirmation breaking below. This is 1120. Let's see. So 1120 is kind of neutral, so this might not be the best put opportunity. Um, even at, let's say, 1125, let's see. Still not a great. 1125 looks better because Vold is pushing down, starting to break uptrend. So say you take your call here, or your put here, I mean, you take your put here. You have to have a loose enough stop loss to have the movement or a good enough entry where you can weather a little bit of upside and wait for that confirmation. Because here, if you just exit because oh, it, it wicked over this ORB uh, 398.5 resistance and you don't and you bail out early and you don't wait for the close, then you might you're going to miss a big opportunity. This would have been a really nice win right here. So the thing I love about this strategy is if you know how to trade price action, so I mean trading actual candle movement, um, and even just trading momentum with the EMAs, this strategy, uh, even with Volt, just Volt, 
um, is high probability and you can find some really, really nice entries. So this was all the five minute chart that I just talked about. Um, let's move over to the 15 minute chart and then we'll go through some more days. If you guys have any questions right now, just um, type them in the chat, let me know. I'm watching the Discord too. If you have any questions, type them over there and I'll answer any questions you guys have. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at the 15 minute chart here now. Same day, Monday the 27th. So, same thing here. We're not gonna get our ORB until this first 15 minute candle closes. So ours is gonna be 945 obviously. So our ORB resistance is going to be 400. Now, where was our five minute ORB? Look at that, 400. And where is our ORB support? 399.2, ours 399.26. I absolutely love when my five minute and 15 minute ORBs are close or identical. It is even stronger of a play. So once you get that confirmation, and if you look here, we get confirmation of breakout here at 9.55. So that would have been on this candle right before we closed at 10 o'clock. And not only are we getting a five minute confirmation of closure over resistance, at the exact same time, we are closing over 15 minute ORB. If you take a call on this back test of support at 400 here at 10 o'clock, um, 10 o'clock right here on the five minute and the 15 minute, you are not only playing the five minute ORB breakout, but you're also at the same time playing the 15 minute ORB breakout. And if you go to 10 o'clock and let's look at volume, let's go back to 10 o'clock. We have beautiful bullish volume, five minute charts, beautifully bullish too. You couldn't ask for a better call. So look in the five minute here. This is really nice too. And you don't always have to play a breakout. You, you can play a support bounce or a rejection. The 15 minutes a little bit better about that. So let's talk about that. So here at, at uh, open, we come down, we bounce off 399.2. We form a really beautiful double bottom here. Um, and this is also the 20, so this is my 15 minute chart. So this blue line is gonna be my five EMA. <laughs> And this purple is going to be my 20 EMA. So here we have a beautiful double bottom off ORB support. And we're bouncing off the 20 EMA, which a 20 EMA support bounce is very strong usually. This would be a really strong call opportunity just taking this bounce here. So now this is where it gets tricky because you can play the price action. But if you're not waiting for closure, so if you start wicking down here like this, you might get stopped out or you might be on the wrong side before you start pushing down hard. So here in the 15 minute double bottom support bounce, okay, we got closure over. So this is another strong call opportunity. We come down, we back test ORB support and the five EMA at the same time. We have green volume, perfect call opportunity. And now this is where you can see how strong this level is. Beautiful double top right at the candle body close right on 400.9 ATR. Beautiful. So here we double top, we come down, we reject this right here. This is a perfect put opportunity. Hard rejection of 400.9 on the 15 minute candle. You play that all every day, all day long down to the next support level, which is right here at 400. Okay, let's go to another day here. Let's go, this was Tuesday. Okay, let me move my volume forward here. So here's Tuesday. Tuesday was a little bit more of a choppy day, but this strategy is real good on range days. Now this is another thing here too, where you gotta be patient, but if you are patient, um, you'll get an entry eventually. You can't force entries. And this is where too, so let's look at the 15 minute first here. Your first entry, and I remember this morning too, all these crazy 15 minute wicks here. Your first true entry didn't come until 11 o'clock on the 15 minute ch chart. Why? Because our candle bodies never rejected at the ORB resistance or support. We pretty much barcoded. And this is where I tell you, you need to wait for confirmation. 
Why? Because your first candle here, if, or second candle at, at, at 9.45, you might have thought, oh, this is gonna break out. However, if you took the call here and you didn't wait for that candle to close, you got burnt for sure. Same thing here, even bigger burn. You gotta wait for confirmation. <clears throat> So, and this is where too, you gotta be careful. So we did break below. And if you played this break below, you probably still could have got like a nice two to 3% profit on a play here. Same thing here. This probably, if you waited for this closure and this big wick up here, this was probably still a nice 5% play. This is where you have to decide your strategy. Is your strategy essentially um, level to level scalps, which is basically what I do, where you're looking for five to 10% and you don't let that position go red, or are you looking to get the bigger play? Are you looking to play a longer DTE that can sit in a little bit of rejection and a little bit of back testing, but still is gonna get the bigger bigger reward? You gotta decide what's best for you. Um, that's where that opening range or the early breakout range comes in. You know, if we break over this first and we close over this first, you could take a call and your stop loss could be 396.5. It might hit, it might not hit, or in your first take profit could be 398.8. You know, this is a nice win if you get up, you know, this is what would have been almost a dollar fifty move, but your stop loss from 390, we'll call it 398.78 down to 396.5, that's, that's a big dollar forty move almost. That's a big stop loss. So you gotta decide your own move here. <clears throat> so this is where we play one time frame, but we can play the other. And this is why I love playing the five minute because it gives you more opportunity, really. So if we come down here, first candle, same thing. And I don't generally play, generally I don't play the first 15 minutes, but I also generally don't play the first 30 minutes, especially if I know there's data coming in. It just really depends. But 15 minute chart here. So we come down, we bounced off support. Too early for me, I wouldn't take it. But I would take this right here, beautiful closure over. We're gonna get that back test. We don't break down back below 397.4. So this is 945. Let's check our volume here. Look at that, 945, we're pushing green. Great, let's take the call. Boom, we take a call, what happens? If you got greedy and you held to 398.3, you lost. Because this came all the way back down and you probably would have got stopped out depending on your stop loss on this uh, 950 candle. However, if your goal is just green and your goal is five to 10%, you got a beautiful win right there on a lower DTE contract. So same thing here. We come back down, we're holding support. You could have taken this fake breakdown and played it back up to here and you probably could have got a nice win. Same thing here, you could take it, but this is where we wait for the bigger prey. This closure right here, um, at 9.55, we closed at 397.34. Our ORB is 397.33. Closing on that is a beautiful bounce opportunity. So this is, let's see, 9.55. Let's look at our volume at 9.55. Where are we at? Okay, so at that moment, we were pushing green, but we rejected. So you would need to be careful on taking a call there because we have red bold, and I don't like to fight against bold. <laughs> So you look in, we go up, come up, hard rejection right there to ATR level, perfect. Come back down, fake breakdown. We did close over though, this is where you gotta be careful. If it doesn't look good and it doesn't from a price action standpoint make sense, you don't trade it. Um, so this is also where at different times, so this time we actually hit the upper ORB level here. You can see we break down, nice support bounces, we're breaking up. Look at that hard rejection right at the ATR level. Perfect. If you play this, beautiful win. So it's all about playing the price action and playing the level. Um, let's see if we can find what we got here. Um, this would have been Wednesday. So same thing here. You can see the whole day. What does it do? It just bounces from level to level to level to level to level. So we're going to go to Friday, our big old green day. That was the second, right? The third. Okay, Thursday's a good opportunity too. So this is where I find limits in the indicator. So let's look at Thursday here. So by, let's see, 1.30 p.m., we have already closed over the upper range five-minute ORB resistance. And from there, there's 
for me, I am very, very, very cautious taking a play. Why? Because you are now over the second profitable target of the day established by the target. Um, and I would not take that play unless you're playing the EMA. So what I mean by that, so let's look at the 15 minute chart here. So we're at 145, we officially closed way over the last ORB resistance. So this is the last established level. So if you're gonna play this, you're now playing momentum. So I would play, okay, we bounced off of the 215, we bounced off the 15 minute five EMA, double bottom, nice call opportunity. Same thing here, once we are over these levels, you are strictly playing price action. You're not playing the strategy anymore. That's where you gotta know the limits of your strategy. Um, Mylon, your question is, do you play SPYX at all? Um, so I actually used to trade pretty much exclusively SPYX when I was scalping. Um, I basically stopped scalping back in, I think it was December. Um, maybe, yeah, I'm pretty sure sometime in December I stopped scalping. Um, the zero DTE premiums just were not as favorable and I just was not having as much success anymore. So I do trade SPY right now. Um, the contract size I use, I could probably um, use use spy x for that but the thing i don't like about it is that when you get these further dtes on spy x the spread is longer and bigger um and it doesn't end up being nice although it'd be nice to just be in one contract of spy x instead of 10 contracts of spy um, but for me no i just trade spy but i predominantly and i predominantly watch spy while i'm trading i do watch futures though um, but most of my charting happens on spy so that's pretty much ORB. Um, that's basically that's basically it. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, this is pretty much all I got for you guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and send me a DM. You guys can comment here. I'll, I'll still watch the comments too and see what you guys got to say. Um, or you guys can send me a message over in the Discord. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this answers some of your questions regarding um, ORB and just kind of what I'm looking for and just kind of the overall strategy of what an ORB is. All right. Hope you guys, uh, 